Hello everyone, welcome to the 12th edition of Business Cafe Online. It is our first international one in English. And uh, today I'm happy to announce that uh, we have two very nice uh, gentlemen as our guests, Jan De Jong and Paul Bradbury. Uh, just to say, uh, Business Cafe are events for small entrepreneurs and those who want to become entrepreneurs. And we organize these events, uh, we've been organizing them for the past 10 years. And uh, in, nine, in last year, we started organizing these international events um, with the intention of showing foreign entrepreneurs coming to Croatia um, to see that this is also possible as a trend opposite to uh, people moving out uh, from Croatia. And um, some of our guests on these live events were Paul and Jan, Jan, and Jan, and they were terrific. Audience loved them, and that's why we wanted to uh, introduce them also to this online edition, so more of you can uh, see how uh, they are very, very inspiring. And uh, for for you to be able to see this for free, uh, two very nice companies sponsored it, Green Hypnotic from Istria, they make beautiful gardens, and Yedem Doma from Zagreb, they make beautiful food. But first of all, uh, Jan and Paul, uh, thank you for joining us and welcome to Business Cafe Online Edition. Thank you very much for having us. First question, where did you two guys meet? Because you actually know each other. Paul, you want to take that one? <laughs> Well, I mean, I've, I've known of Jan for many, many years, but um, I only actually met him in the flesh once, and it was at some, uh, some ra random event called Business Cafe, I think it was called. <laughs> so, uh, and he gave, a, he gave a really great presentation about uh, everything that he's doing. Uh, it, was, uh, it was really, really good and very well received. And we've been in touch uh, quite a bit offline, and, um, you know, he's doing a lot of really exciting things, creating lots of jobs creating lots of positivity and trying uh, to, yeah. trying to and lots of opportunity and uh, so yeah it's, it's actually I'm actually really keen to get to split and have a day with him because we've got a lot to talk about I think <laughs> that, that day will come for actually yeah um, the first question which usually people uh, ask you how did you end up uh, in Croatia shall I yeah. go first you go first yeah so, uh, I mean, it's been a while ago in the meanwhile. It's, it's, uh, it's been 13 years ago that I came to Croatia. Uh, the original plan was for me to, to come here to, to do my final thesis. So my Diplomski Rat. Uh, the topic of my Diplomski Rat was to, uh, to see if there is a need for, for starting up a call center in Croatia. And after being here for about a year, uh, we employed the first like 35 people. I graduated from university. And then I actually decided to, uh, to continue what I started and to further develop the business. Uh, in the meanwhile, of course, I fell in love with the country. I fell in love with the love of my life, my wife, Slavica, who is from here. And uh, in the meanwhile, I mean, it's, it's just been a really phenomenal ride being in Croatia. It's a, it's a country that, that really excites me where I see a lot of opportunities. So definitely not planning on leaving for time being. We'll talk about uh, these opportunities uh, a little bit later. Paul, how did you end up in Croatia? Uh, it's because of the Croatian National Tourist Board. Uh, they had a uh, an advert uh, on CNN uh, in 2002 when I was living in northern Somalia in, uh, in Hargeisa, uh, Croatia, the Mediterranean, as it once was. And I just sold my house uh, in the UK, and I decided spontaneously to buy a house in Croatia, and I ended up coming to Hoa. I ended up uh, coming to Yelsa. There was only one house for sale. I bought it. I went to the library to get a Croatian book, and there she was, with Ochika Amore. My beautiful <laughs> <laughs> Great. So uh, both of you first came to Croatia, then fell in love with Croatian yeah. ladies. But yeah. and both of you actually, which is very interesting, you're both of you are not living in the capital city of Zagreb. Jan, you are situated in a small. Uh, small town, small village uh, near Split, and Paul, you were in Varaždin, right? In the northern part of Croatia. Yeah, in a, in a small village just outside Varaždin, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so, um, this is how you ended up in Croatia, but why did you actually fall in love in Croatia? Because when we uh, see and uh, uh, when we read your interviews and uh, hear you talk, you actually talk very beautifully about Croatia. 
So besides uh, the nice ladies, Jan, uh, why did you fall in love in Croatia? Oh, for me, okay. I, I thought uh, you meant the interviews of, of Paul. Uh, um, I mean, I think that I fell in love in, uh, with Croatia for the same reasons as, as all the tourists fall in love with Croatia. I mean, it's a beautiful country that literally offers everything. Uh, you, you have a beautiful coast, obviously beautiful sea. Uh, the weather is really easy to get used to, 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 the, to the beautiful weather over here. Uh, I love the lifestyle, I love the food, uh, beautiful wines, and, and I just thought, you know, I'm not going to just stay here for, for a little while for, for as a holiday, but I would, I would actually love to live here. And uh, at the same time, uh, yeah, okay, we'll get to that part obviously later, but uh, for me as an entrepreneur, there were so many opportunities here that I could further explore that um, there were a lot of good reasons for me to stay in Croatia. Right, Paul? Was it uh, for you also no, nice? I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd say it was the same. And, and it was very interesting that uh, one of my school friends I hadn't seen for 25 years came to visit for three or four years ago. And he's a very successful accountant, earns lots of money, lives outside London. And he came on a sailing holiday with his young family. And we saw each other for, for the first time in 25 years. And uh, he was telling me about his life and I was telling him about my life. And basically, he was working really hard to have two weeks holiday on Qua every year, whereas <laughs> I was working hard but not actually making any money, but um, I was having that lifestyle 12 months a year. So lifestyle is a big thing. But what, what, one thing I'd like to say very early on is that a lot of people who are negative about Croatia, they talk about the corruption, they talk about uh, the um, uh, nepotism and so on like that. And, you know, we have this concept of Uklebistan and everything. And... To me, one of the big things about Croatia is, is mindset. Mm -hmm. And so, so the, the way I approach uh, the negative living here in Croatia that everybody complains about is I compare myself to uh, somebody who lives in Norway who likes drink, drinking and smoking. Norway is an amazing country to live in, but if you want to go drinking and smoking, it's really expensive. You pay a really heavy tax for that. Okay. Croatia is an incredible place to live in, but we have this problem with Bukhlebistan and everything else. And so rather than fighting it and you know, complaining about it, I just put it down like you have to pay an extra tax to enjoy this beauty. And if you get your mindset around that, suddenly things uh, change a lot. And I surround myself with positive people. There are, there are some amazing people in this country. And I'll tell you what, you know, this is the most beautiful country in Europe. It's got the best lifestyle in Europe. And if you can surround yourselves with the most interesting, positive, forward-thinking people in this country, it's an outstanding experience, full of opportunity. Great. That's uh, why our our motto of Business Cafe is uh, find a tribe and grow your business. I think it's very, very important to surround yourself with people who set a positive example and who inspire us and support us. Um, I'm glad you mentioned this Uhebistan text. I remember when you uh, spoke about it on uh, our live event last year. Um, so without a doubt, everyone can agree that Croatia is a nice place to live. Um, but uh, we can improve a lot business conditions. Uh, I think a lot of people moved out from Croatia uh, from for economical reasons. So what is that that you, Jan, both Jan and Paul, see in Croatia? So many uh, business opportunities that other people don't uh, didn't see, and that's why they moved out. Jan, would you like to start? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, uh, I mean, I, I hear I a very big, hear echo. big echo. I can hear myself, hear myself. echoing. Echoing. Uh, it's fine with us. I don't hear echo. You're doing great. Okay. Um, I mean, a couple of days ago, I, I put out a post on LinkedIn. Uh, where one of the things that I said is that a lot of people have obviously left Croatia for economic reasons. And some people responded to that post by saying like, you know, it's not only for economic reasons, it's because of political reasons and, and whatnot. But then I think by myself, you know, if, if those, let's say a half a million people that have left Croatia, if they would be making salaries of uh, two or 3,000 euros a month, they would probably not have left, you know. So I think deep down inside, it really is for economic reasons. Uh, of course, there's a lot of things that, that are, uh, ready to be improved uh, in Croatia and, and especially just turning a lot of the business processes as a government to turn that into uh, digi in, in, to digitalize these kind of things. I mean, just to compare, I mean, if I, in the Netherlands, if I want to move my company from one business address to another, 
then I do this online with the Dutch Chamber of Commerce, and it's literally a five-minute job. Uh, here in Croatia, I will need to go to a public notary, and then after I did all that, then a court judge needs to approve me changing the address of my company, and I will probably spend like three or four thousand kuna on, on, on such a transaction. Um, th this is just not helping companies to 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 focus on what they really need to do. You know, we are being distracted with a lot of administration all the time in in business. Uh, luckily, I mean. I found myself a very good lawyer and I found myself a very good accountant and financial advisor uh, that are handling most of these kind of things for me. Uh, but that doesn't stop, of course, the fact that I will have to be the one going to the public notary to sign off on all those things and that you spend a lot of money on uh, on those kind of administrative uh, processes. That That's a pity. But still, this didn't distract you or demotivate you. You still see a lot of business opportunities here. You know, I always see light at the end of the tunnel. I'm, I'm just such a uh, guy that, that always has a positive mindset to, to whatever situation you put me in. I mean, even when this corona situation hit us, you know, some people, they respond in that way that, that they are just going to crawl up in bed and just wait for this to finish. Um, I can say that I did the complete opposite. I, I went full force into business development. I found creative ways to get a lot of attention to myself and to my company. And in the, in the company Web Power, for instance, uh, we grew our client database, client portfolio with some 30% since the lockdown. So, you know, I, I think it just requires to be very creative and focused and, and to do have a positive mindset. And I have to agree with Paul there, what he said earlier, uh, you need to surround yourself with positive people. But I would even go one step further. I make strong efforts to exclude negative people from my life. Yeah, that's very important also. Yes. If somebody Sometimes. starts being negative around me, I'm, I'm either going away or I make sure that this person goes away from me. I don't want to be surrounded with negativity. Saying no is sometimes even more important than saying yes. Uh, Paul, before I ask you the same question, what do you think it can be improved? I'd like to comment of um, some, you often criticize tourism and uh, um, at least people uh, have a perception that you criticize tourism. And uh, we as entrepreneurs try to um, reduce the rates that we pay to tourist board, but it seems that they have done at least uh, one good thing, uh, commercial brought you here and you live here in Croatia. Well, I'm, I'm very grateful to the Croatian National Tourist Board for that uh, niche targeting of uh, pink, <laughs> pink, pink, pink British tourists in uh, northern Somalia, because uh, <laughs> with that one advert, they got me. So, yeah. Um, listen, I, I'm, I'm a... a People say I'm either extremely positive or I'm extremely negative, and it's a bit like everything in Croatia. It's Ustashi Partizani. It's one side, the other side. FDP, how they say everything else. Um, if you actually follow what I write, uh, I'm incredibly positive, positive about Croatia. Yes, my reasons. perception is also like that, but sometimes but, people say that. But I do indulge in something called constructive criticism, and mm -hmm. so let me sh and let me show you. Uh, let me explain how. For example, uh, I did an article last week about how the symbol of Uklebistan 2.0 is the fax machine. Because if you look at all the ministries, most of them have fax details. On the Ministry of Tourism website homepage, they had the phone number and the fax number, not email, just the fax <laughs> number, in 2020. And a lot, a lot of people in Croatia don't even know what a fax machine looks like because it's, it's, it's from the previous century. But here we had the Minister of Tourism, Presidency of the European Union, contacted by fact. I mean, it's just absurd. 2020, and, yeah. <laughs> and, well, and what happened was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm only a small portal, but Index saw the story, they did the story, and within two hours, the fax machine was abolished from the Ministry of Tourism website completely, and now we have four very, very useful email addresses, one for journalists, one for tourists, and one for, you know. So, yes, was I negative? I suppose the people in the ministry didn't think it was very positive. Was it actually a good thing for Croatia? I believe so. And now today, today with the, with the National Tourist Board, we've had some correspondence. And at the start, at the start of today, on their on their official information, we had two we had two airports in Yalta, in the small town where I live. And now today, we have the official Narodni Novina, the official Gazette has gone. All that useless information has gone. So, you know, I 
would much prefer to be talking about how beautiful this place is, how just amazing this place is. And it, it really pains me that I have to get out and just say these really, really obvious things. But, you know, if, if people are starting to listen now, then I'm happy and I'm happy that I'm doing a good service for Croatia. You're doing a great I service. I, I saw also in one article you answered a question why you live here. You said that you found a little piece of heaven. So why would you leave from from heaven? It's, so listen, listen. So, so now w with this lockdown, we decided we would come back to Hua, and mm -hmm. so we we have a house just my my wife's from Yelsa and and her family lives here. We came back on uh, March thirteenth. I spent a month in self isolation, meeting just with my family. I was I was working. I had half an hour by the beach every day, and that was it. So I didn't speak to a single person, and. Then I found myself in this situation that there were no other journalists around because of all the lockdown. So for Zakrijan, for the procession, I was one of the only journalists there. And now this is, I've fallen totally in love with Dalmatia all over again. But now we have this beautiful island with no tourists and distance from, from local people. So I feel like I have my own private island and I'm going out with my wife and we're videoing it, we're documenting it, and we're doing a really good uh, YouTube series. And it's amazing. And that is what I want to write about and tell the world about. And that's what I do tell the world about. And I just wish that if people did their jobs, you know, let me learn, and I'm, I'm, going to do a, I'm going to do a story on this, but I did a mail shot to every single local tourist board. We have 319 local tourist boards. And I did a press release and I said, I want to do a project called Virtual Croatia, where, because at the moment we have two things. We have people have a desire to travel, but can't. And the second thing we have is people who have time to research. So everybody's doing these long distance love things and that's all pretty. But mm -hmm. what, what if we created that desire and then we actually gave people content to really research something? So with Zagreb Tourist Board, um, I, I, I was at work, in contact with them a couple of months ago and I said, let's do something called uh, 10 virtual tools to discover Zagreb. So somebody who's interested in Zagreb can then watch the video about, um, you know, all the museums. They can watch the video about the gourmet and everything else. And it was really successful. And I thought, well, why don't we do this for the whole country? So I emailed all 319 tourist boards and I said, I will do a free article for you. You send me the tools, I'll do a free article. So I sent it to 319 tourist boards. How many do you think even, opened, even read the email? Three. 390. Okay. Three. Okay. Three. Okay. <laughs> How many do you think actually clicked on the link to see uh, what the offer was? One. <laughs> How many? Okay. I, you don't have to answer. I'm, my third question is: How many people sent me information? And my favourite question four is: How many tourist boards unsubscribed from the offer? <laughs> okay. Now I'm not going to tell you the information today because I'm about to do a really nice story on it, and I think it will be very interesting. In this in this current climate where we need urgent reform, uh, I'll just give you one thing: seventy-five percent of local tourist boards did not even open the email. Okay. Seventy-five percent. They must be so, getting a lot of emails. They're really, they must really busy. Be waiting and, for and, fax. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, let, but, but let me tell you this: one of the tourist boards that unsubscribed last year had two thousand seven hundred tourists. Right. Okay. Okay. We have a, a question from the audience, which is similar to what I wanted to ask you. The uh, question is, uh, what are some of the greatest challenges uh, you have uh, faced in Croatia? Both of you already mentioned this bureaucracy, Uhebistan, uh, nepotism. Uh, would you like to uh, share something else besides these three issues? Is there something else? Well, I would say it depends a little bit on uh, on the business. In mm -hmm. in the contact center in the past, I had different kind of challenges than I'm having today with, for example, the marketing agency that I'm having today with uh, with our email marketing uh, company, Web Power. Uh, and, and it's very much, uh, I mean, for example, in the contact center, biggest challenges in the beginning were cash flow. 
uh, mm-hmm. we were perhaps not always working for for the right clients, and sometimes it was very difficult to collect our our money uh, until we grew bigger, and then we started working for companies like Hrvatski Telecom, and with those kind of companies, you of course don't have to be afraid uh, whether you're going to get paid in time. So then all of a sudden we didn't have cash flow problems anymore, but then you have other different kind of uh, of challenges. Uh, one of them, for example, being that in the past I had uh, I had my fair share of challenges with with labor inspection. In a company where we are employing a lot of people and where there's a high circulation of people, uh, you are a perfect target, so to say, for labor inspection. And, and even though um, with, with my Dutch mind, uh, trying to do everything fully compliant and, 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 and following the local laws and putting up all the stickers nicely on the wall where they need to be about where the fire extinguisher is and whatnot, uh, unfortunately, inspections, they... They don't happen here in Croatia because they want to make sure that the place is safe or that you are actually obeying the law. Uh, I think, honestly, that they're hoping that you're not following all the laws so that they can just impose uh, penalties on you. And yeah, as I said, I had my fair share of that in the first two years that we started operating the call center business. Uh, We actually, these were investment years, so we didn't make any profit. And in the third year, I was going to make maybe around uh, like a hundred thousand kuna profit and i got three penalties of three times thirty thousand kuna and that's what we worked for the whole year uh for for labor inspection and for really silly things you know uh something that if they would have just come and told me like hey listen you shouldn't be doing it in that way please don't do that anymore i would have said sorry i didn't know you know from now on it won't happen anymore but no they they came to impose to impose a penalty and and, and these kind of things you just don't see that in Western Europe, and you do see that in Croatia. But, but these, these, are, didn't, these didn't discourage you. That's no. I mean, uh, it, I think it takes a lot more for me to be discouraged. But uh, of course, you are fearful. On okay, what's going to happen next year? You know, am I going to again work a whole year so I can pay at the end of the year a penalty to inspection? And also in the fourth year of our call center, they came again. Sometimes they came three, four times in a month uh having checking the same papers you know we pretty much could just give them the papers that we gave them the week before um it didn't discourage me but it did frighten me especially because i'm a foreigner and i can definitely imagine that if there are foreign investors coming to croatia and they're having to deal with these kind of things that uh, some yeah some foreign investors are definitely going to be discouraged by that and they're going to decide you know what Perhaps this is not the country that I that I want to be investing in. Yeah, yeah I'm just going to pull it. out. Let me do it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, Paul. The same question, but before that, uh, Natalia just wants to say hi to handsome ah. friend. <laughs> the queen of the queen of Ogolina, right? She yeah. is, she is, she is an unbelievably fantastic guide for nightlife in Ogolin in November. It's an amazing call, yeah. I know, I know. Two of you were uh, fantastic guests on our first event, and I'm glad yeah. that uh, all of you got together afterwards. So what are the biggest the challenges that you faced in Croatia? Also, uh, or something additional? Uh, honestly, today, um, I mean, I'm probably the only person in Croatia that quite enjoys the bureaucracy, because um, I, I find it, um, I, 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 it's just so absurd. Um, but. And you know, but to to write about it is it's it's a wonderful thing to be able to do. But I would say my biggest challenge in Croatia was one thing, and once I solved that thing, and it took me about twelve years, uh, everything else has been fine ever since. Um, and that one thing was mindset. Uh, yeah. So, and I think I said it uh, last year at your business cafe. I think uh, you know one of the pieces of advice I would give to any anybody coming to Dalmatia to invest with a million, twenty million, a hundred million, fifty thousand is um, you know, everybody coming with these amazing uh, ideas that work in the West and they're not even here. And I had one sentence of advice, which took me twelve years to learn, and I said. I say to people, if you can listen to this one sentence and you can embrace it and live by it, your life will be amazing here. And if and if you can't, as I didn't, you will be frustrated. And the one sentence is, do not try and change Dalmatia, but expect Dalmatia <laughs> to change you. 
And if you can get that into your system, this is the most amazing place in the world to live. So now I do I have, <laughs> I mean, I, of course, of course I have challenges and, you know, we lost every single client we had uh, in, in 48 hours uh, in March with, with, with everything. I mean, it was like everything just, my whole life disappeared, but so it is for everybody else. So I'm not complaining. And now right. we've, we've worked very hard. So I actually I, would say to people that the biggest thing to think about is mindset. And, you know, I, I, I see all these um, expat forums, these, these diaspora who are talking about coming back. And they don't want to come back because it's corrupt, because the salaries are low, because this, this, this. You forget that the people who left Croatia to emigrate left with nothing on their backs. And they created immense opportunity and wealth. And yes, they went to countries of opportunity. Of course they did. And coming to Croatia is not going to be that hard. It's not going to be that uh, as easy. But if you come to Croatia with a positive mindset, and you come to Croatia and you surround yourself with positive people wanting to move this country forward, there is massive opportunity. Great. Um, when we were preparing for the for this online show, we discussed your project uh, Blast or Project Chromats. Would you like to uh -huh. say something more about that? What are you planning to do? What is well, it's 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 not. It's, well, we'll see. So basically, I was having a beer on the piazza in Yelsa two days ago, and I was just uh, thinking about what we're going to talk about today and a few other things and how the world has changed. And um, we met at Business Cafe, the first international, about just over a year ago. Okay. And on that occasion, I drove from Varaždin to Zagreb and back. Okay. So I drove 180 kilometers uh, to come to your business cafe. Right. Last week, I got my, my my monthly email from Google Maps saying, this is where you've been this month. And all these, you know, remember all those countries you can visit a month and else, yeah? And it was amazing. I had traveled 65 kilometers in the whole of April. <laughs> and I had walked 100 kilometers. So wow. for the first time in my life, probably, I'd walked 50% more than I traveled, okay? but. I also, that also meant that today I'm sitting in my um, in bed uh, here in Yelsa, and I'm at, I'm at your business cafe. And a year ago, I traveled 180 kilometers, which is three times more than I've traveled this whole last month. Okay, so the world has changed. And so a year ago, your business had to be in Zagreb. It had to be because it was a physical yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. And now, and now, and it will be again, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. your business now today. You could be in Venezuela or I don't know Chile or Australia, and we and you could be sitting in you know in Hong Kong, and I could be sitting in you know back mm -hmm. in Somalia or whatever. It doesn't really matter, you know. So things have changed. And so I want to give you this idea. Um, it's called Operation Chrome Chromads, and it's a very simple thing. And again, it's about that one thing we need to change: mindset. Okay, so. I want you just to think about Croatia, mm -hmm. and I want you to put Uhlebistan to one side, forget, forget it exists, forget we have a tourism industry, totally. mm -hmm. and I just want you to focus on the natural beauty, what Croatia has. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to say is, today, more and more people, and soon it will be the majority, we all work in the same office. Mm -hmm. And there's only two very, and then the office is called the internet. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's only two real major variables about the office, and that is connectivity, i.e., 5G, 4G, 3G, and mm -hmm. time zone. Okay. So you can pretty much be in your office, uh, more and more people coming uh, digital and anywhere in the world, pretty much these days. So. You go to work in the morning, you go to your office. And now when you come out of your office, you go home. So uh, until recently, you would go home to your house because you, you worked in a physical office, you'd go home to your house and your kids would go to school. But online school is coming. It, it's inevitable, it will come. I mean, this has been a very interesting experiment in Croatia. So it will come maybe in two, three years, but it will come. So basically, we all now work in the same office Mm -hmm. and, when, and when we come home, we have the choice 
of deciding where is home. Now, a bunch of people will want to stay in the village that they grew up in with a local family. And a bunch of people will want lifestyle. What about if I could go and live in a place that had really good security, safety, really mm -hmm. good industry, natural beauty, great food and wine, great infrastructure, good internet, connectivity, affordability in the EU, all the things that Croatia has, okay? Why would I not choose to leave my office and go home there, okay? So that's the basic concept, right? Now, in this country, this, this Croatia, that we still don't have Uklebistan, but we'll, we'll bring Uklebistan into the discussion because we, we, we have to. Uh -huh. This is a country which has amazing food and great wine, and it has amazing food producers who are making really high quality local food at, um, you know, that can be delivered locally and nationally. So suddenly we are living in this great lifestyle stuff where we're buying local, we're supporting local businesses. Now, if we bring people in like that into this country, they are going to necessarily create jobs. They're going to inspire people and they're going to move this country forward and the thing that it needs to move forward to most, which is mindset, mm -hmm. okay? Right, so now that's the basic thing. So basically, we'll come back to all clear in a minute, but basically uh, my idea with, uh, with uh, Operation Chromads is that um, we create the condition that Croatia has the natural advantages more than anywhere else in Europe for lifestyle, safety, English, all those things. We have that. Now, if we can create the framework, the legislation and everything else to give those people what they need, then it could be absolutely amazing. So now, let's bring in Okay. Mm -hmm. so this is me. Uh, I have three scenarios. Scenario number one, which is probably most likely, is that they decide not to engage at all in this and they just see this as a way to get money. And that's fine, I and mean, that's that's the reality, that's the tax that I pay, that well, I mentioned, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So in that case, somebody can still come for a month or two months or three months and they can enjoy the wonderful lifestyle and they pay their taxes back where they are back home and everything else. But in the evening, they go to the restaurants, they go to the bars, they go to everything else. My best friend is from New York. He just arrived on Hawaii yesterday. He's taken a place for four months. He works from remotely. He's already spent, I don't know how much he's already spent. He's going to be here for four months. He's going to be spending, 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 spending like that. But that's VAT money from food and everything else. That's money coming in, yeah? And he will create employment opportunities for people that's doing things. So even if Uklebisan does not engage in us at all, we have the possibility if we market ourselves properly uh, with, with a proper coherent tourism strategy that doesn't exist at the moment, that we can bring that kind of lifestyle tourism, which is not dependent on the summer, it's not dependent on the coast. Uh, there's a woman called Julie from Denver, Colorado, and she moved to Osiak, and she was there for four or five months as a digital nomad, and she said it was one of the best places she's ever lived. Think about that, everybody's leaving Osiak because there's no opportunity, and yet we have somebody from Denver moving into Osiak because it was safe, good English, cheap, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Scenario number two is that the Uklebistan um, sees, oh, we're not getting as much money because everything's wrapped around us. Uh, maybe we should engage and try and encourage this so we can make some more money. So by doing that, they would maybe have some reform of the ridiculous immigration thing that means that you know, Americans can only stay for a certain amount of time before they have to leave and everything else. So it becomes easier for those that to spend some time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and if we move far enough along on that particular um, uh, framework, then we can um, get some of those people to open companies here and do businesses here and employ people here and actually move their operations. So that would be a, a higher level of wealth generation. And then the actual dream is the, the beautiful people of Croatia, you know, who are masters of celebrating World Cup final success, they're masters at celebrating the death of Oliver. They could get pissed off enough to actually demand change. And you know, we get rid of all Klebistan, just let's say. 
So if we got rid of Uchlevistan, then we have this country and this opportunity. And if all the workers want to work in Croatia because of the lifestyle, why wouldn't the big companies like I don't know, Google, Apple, whoever, if the, if the taxation regime was attractive enough, why wouldn't they move here? Because of course. In the world. So yeah, and that's yeah. the basic concept. But then, you know, everybody says, yeah, 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 but, you know, this is Croatia, but this is Eastern Europe, you know. So let's take a look at one of the which has just been unbelievable since independence in 1991. It was part of the Soviet Union. Um, when it left the Soviet Union, 92% of its business was with Russia. It, had, it wasn't producing anything of its own. Uh, no, no, it didn't have much cash reserve, anything else. And it was pretty bankrupt and it was pretty dead. Mm -hmm. And they decided to go digital. And today, mm -hmm. Estonia is the shining light of uh, how a country went absolutely digital um, and has been at the forefront of amazing innovation. They've had, I think, four unicorns, uh, uh, business unicorns from there. And this is a country that had nothing, except they had mindset. Yeah, they yeah. rebranded uh, themselves. Completely yeah, um, rebranded yeah. themselves from the inside. Mm -hmm. why, don't, why don't we give e-visas e for digital nomads to come and spend their lifestyle money here? Mm -hmm. That would be a so great idea. Then, well, it's a bit, but it doesn't cost anything. You know, this, of course, this is, but that's, not, what we, uh, that's what we discuss uh, all the time, this change of mindset. Yeah. I think that's uh, very, very important. And I hope uh, we'll get to that first scenario, which is a dream scenario, to uh, get rid of Uhebistan and to really change and to transform this country into a country of uh, real opportunities. So let us take a look yeah. at a few questions that arrived in the meantime. Um, uh, Jan. Uh, what do you think about Croatian employees? What is your experience about employees? Are you satisfied with their work mentality? Probably that's the well, real question uh, behind this. I mean, for me, it's very difficult to speak about employees in general. I can talk about my employees. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, then, then I'm in a good spot because I'm actually deciding who I want to hire and who not. And, and I usually always hire people based upon their attitude. Uh, not necessarily skill set, but if they have the right mindset and the right attitude uh, and that they really want to be of added value to our company, then everything else we can teach them. So um, for me, Croatian people are, are, are very hardworking people, very smart people, very educated people, at least the ones that I hire. Uh, also, if I look at, for example, my wife, uh, she finished uh, economic faculty. And if I see what, what she had to do to finish her university, Compare that with what I had to do to finish my university. I think that finishing a Croatian university is definitely more difficult than finishing one in the Netherlands. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and also if you look at Croatian people that are maybe now diaspora and they're working all over the world, uh, very often these are very, very successful people. It doesn't matter where they live. Uh, and then, of course, that's where I have to connect the dots with what Paul earlier said, and that is mindset, because when the Croatian people are working abroad and they're maybe surrounded with different kind of mindset and they're applying the same mindset for themselves, then we can be very, very successful. Uh, and one thing that Paul also said earlier, where countries like Estonia uh, are, are surpassing Croatia in any kind of way, unfortunately, it's not only Estonia. There has been a lot of countries that used to be behind Croatia and right now they're ahead of Croatia and 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 what I think that if if Croatia would be as competitive as they are in sports if they would apply the same level of being competitive in business and in government then I think that Croatia would hold some very good cards let me Wait, let me have a question let, let me for have one Paul uh -huh. okay sorry I was just going to say um Matt, Matt Rimats gave me uh, gave a very interesting presentation at Polyzetnik Mindsets uh, conference last year, and uh, he was talking about the opportunities of the car industry mm -hmm. and how Slovakia 
has become a major, major car uh, producing uh, country. And mm -hmm. they have something like 500 companies making car parts for the Slovakian car industry. And Slovakian car and part exports last year were 22 billion euros, which was more than Croatia's total exports at 17.3 billion euros. And now we have an opportunity with Remats. I mean, he's brought Hyundai and Porsche into Croatia. We could really do something if that's the way we want to go. And at the moment, our car industry is a guy who makes, I think he's made 10 cars in his life. And that's our car industry. But he's got the biggest names in the world investing in his business. So this is a huge opportunity. But again, it's about mindset. Again, about mindset and context. Yeah, Mate was our guest also in November last year. And um, he was very, very inspiring. Uh, Paul, a short question for you. Uh, what do you think uh, now for this tourist season? Should we concentrate on uh, local uh, or foreigners for tourists? Who do we turn I mean, to this year? Well, I think, first of all, we need to decide, do we want to be 100% healthy? Uh, do we want to try and salvage what we can from the economy? And that's not a question for me to answer. That's a question for... But I would say that um, it seems that uh, we're going to try and open the borders. And I mean, I, I, I hope it's going to be great. But when you have one flight from Frankfurt, uh -huh. and I don't know how many people got infected on that, and then they went all over Croatia, and then it started. I mean, so, you know, I don't know. I think long term, if we're smart, we can actually forget about tourism being 20% of our GDP in its current framework. Mm -hmm. And we can work on this whole concept of um, chromads and uh, of you know digitalization and the opportunities there. And then we can have the coast of Croatia enjoyed by local people at local prices. Wouldn't that be nice? Because people will have money in their pockets. But Admit it, you enjoy having Hvar as your private island. Oh, <laughs> you no, enjoy I'll, it. I'll, I'll chat, don't worry. <laughs> okay, talking about mindset, we have a question. Uh, would you say that Croats uh, like to complain that they're a moaning nation? Jan, do you think we complain well, too much? <laughs> uh, I think that people in general complain a lot. I mean, Dutch people are masters at complaining. We complain about literally everything that you can complain about. Uh, I, 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 I honestly just have to think that, say that uh, I think that people in Croatia have more reasons to complain than people in the Netherlands. <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of things are really, of course, very well organized in the Netherlands. And despite all that, people still complain. And, and here in Croatia, there's a lot of room for improvement and and we are complaining about that and rightfully so uh i would actually even say that um i mean and i i say it all the time if what happens here in croatia if that would happen in france people would already call a revolution and people would already be on the streets uh and and i mean that's also why why i very much support for example glass polders etnica uh, mm -hmm. I think that the government really needs to start listening to entrepreneurs. Uh, we as entrepreneurs, we know how to market a product. We know how to deliver a good product or service at the right price. And truth to be told, in Croatia, you're being overcharged for the public service that you're enjoying. Yeah, value for Very money. We don't, receive, uh, we don't receive what we uh, need and what we pay for. That was actually last year on our events. That was... Uh, one thing that many of you foreign entrepreneurs said that it's not the taxes itself but what we uh, receive what we get for uh, these high taxes that's the real po problem yes. and when you mentioned glass pods uh, we are going to say hi to her and the rest of the team i was one of the founders and if you are still not uh, in glass pods please join us um we have some more questions uh, some uh, some are similar ones so i will combine them in the one um how do you see uh, croatia now after this lockdown are you positive do you think uh, you expect some positive momentum good changes what do you say let's talk to paul first and then jan 
I think, well, first of all, I think Croatia has done, up until now, has done an outstanding job on the health side. I mean, really, um, and, you know, Vili Baros uh, has shown us how a Croatian ministry can work for the people. The communication has been outstanding, really has, and uh, the measures and everything else. My only fear now is there's there's always the argument between health and economy, and that's not something I'm going to jump into because it's a very polarized thing. But the thing that's happening now, I think, and I fear, is uh, there's a third thing coming in, politics. And now we have the election coming in, and I think the whole treatment and handling of coronavirus has been politicized. And that's because people have agendas to win elections. And so I feel that the potentially the uh, concentration is not on health or health and economy. It's about getting reelected in July, wherever the election is. Yeah, and that really makes me scared. But I would say that this has been a great experience in some ways because we have things like online schooling. We've, We've tried things that we would never have dreamed of trying in Croatia. You know, people now are realizing, man, I can do this online. Why am I going to queue up for half an hour, get there, the Miranda's on, I have to wait, I have to come back, I have to get a pet chat here, you know? And so I think it will fast track uh, Croatia 2.0, the digitalization process. And I think people are angry enough. They don't return to the old system and faxes oh. and everything. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, but, but let's see. But then, but you see, and the great thing about Glass Polytechnica, I mean, I, I, I don't know, the, I know some of the guys there, is that they were pissed off enough mm -hmm. to get into a coherent situation where they demanded change. Now, if the Croatian people could get that pissed off, could get less comfortable about life and demand that same change, we would have change. Okay, we will get everyone pissed off. That's the idea. <laughs> okay. Um, just wanted to mention something. I just like to comment on something you mentioned: um, economy or health. I'm uh, more uh, for holistic approach uh, when dealing with all problems. I think uh, sometimes we pay too high price, and I think we have to approach to every problem all the time, uh, considering everything else. Not um, for example, health or economy. I think we have to take care of the whole society and take everything into account. So I think in the beginning of this crisis, maybe this was uh, not so much uh, well presented in media, economy or health. And then people who were paying attention to, let's say, economical part and, uh, were said that uh, they are not so, they are not empathic, they only, they think about profit. And that is not true. They are just uh, taking care of, of uh, something else. Jan, you are also. Would you say that you are optimistic about what happens now after lockdown? Or <clears throat> well, I mean, maybe first to get back on on uh, economy versus uh, health. Mm -hmm. You see that other countries like Sweden, they are taking a different approach to this, where they mm -hmm. say, you know what, if you are either in the category of being old or weak then go isolate yourself and everything else needs to continue. And actually, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking with, uh, uh, with two guys from Sweden and I mentioned to them something like, okay, but at your place, it's business as usual. You know, in Sweden, everything continues working like before. And then they had to correct me there uh, where they said, yeah, you know, restaurants are open, shops are open. Uh, but at the same time, the government has asked everybody to take its own personal responsibility and not to go out if you don't really have to. So what you get over there is that you actually have restaurants that are fully operational, empty. But no customers. Yeah, that's yeah. also so not a honestly, I, I don't know what is worse, uh, having to close your restaurant and, and making different kind of arrangements with uh, with your staff and maybe to get government support for that or having to operate your restaurant, but don't have any customers because everybody is being responsible over there. Uh, I think that uh, in terms of culture, I mean, first of all, in Croatia, you have a lot of elderly people living together with their children. Uh, I think that the whole situation in Croatia called for the measures that Croatia took. I think that Croatia took good measures there. Uh, it's just too bad that, again, we depend for 20% of our GDP, we are depending on incoming tourists. And yeah, when the borders are locked down, that's when it's really gonna hurt. At the same time, I, I feel positive about Croatia for when the borders are gonna reopen again. 75% uh, of the tourists in Croatia, they're coming uh, by car and by bus. 
So mm-hmm. I think that once the borders are reopening, that for a lot of people that want to still enjoy a holiday, if they are living in the surrounding countries of Croatia, that we are going to be one of the best alternatives to actually travel to. Unlike, for example, Greece or Turkey or Tunisia, where you have to go uh, uh, by plane. Um, I hope that this Corona situation is going to really be the spark that we needed for organizations like Udruge, like Glas Poduzetnika, to, to stand up and to really demand change. Uh, I would have even preferred to see that already a couple of years ago, and not because of Corona, but just because of the situation that we are in all together. Uh, I think that we as Croatian people need to unite. I need to be, we need to show what we want with this country. And last but not least, but the government needs to understand who it's working for. You know, the government is there to work for the people. And, 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 and at the same time, Croatian people need to be smart who they're going to be voting for next time. Yeah, maybe this situation will help them to realize who is actually uh, paying money to the... I mean, we are now asking from the government to support our businesses because we can't survive without that support, obviously. The mm-hmm. private sector can uh, survive. Uh, and then, of course, you have people say like, okay, but you just want to uh, focus on getting more profit and all that. I can tell you one thing. If the tax pressure that I'm feeling with my company wasn't as big as it is for the past 13 years, I would not need any government support. Of course. You know, when I would have built up plenty of reserves to, to continue and sit out this period with Corona. Of course. And that's, that's another story for this support. It's actually not a support, but anyway. Um, We're just getting back what we always have been paying. Not only that, but it's uh, more uh, cheaper for them to pay a minimum wage uh, to us to give it to our employees rather than to have all these employees on a burza, right? Yeah, and they, yeah but they, it's, it's the revenue know. and the income that we as a private sector are generating from which we are maintaining basically everything that, that we call government. Of course. So it all comes down to um, what we always talk about on Business Cafe, this mindset of entrepreneurs. Uh, we have to be flexible. Uh, we have to see what, what resources we have and maximize that. So what people usually say, make a lemonade out of lemons you have. We have to be resilient uh, to get back on our feet as fast as, as, fast as we can. Um, so to wrap all this discussion uh, up, we, agree, we all agree that Croatia is a very nice place to live, uh, great food, great wine, uh, beautiful and smart women, if I may add. <laughs> Ed, you both married <laughs> Croatian women, so I can add this. And uh, but we have some things to improve uh, in order to make Croatia a better country to do business. And I, I think we all agree. We mentioned that it's very, very important to change uh, mindset and uh, to make a new framework and um, legislation. So all these, let's say, dreams uh, can come true. And how do we do that? We have to unite. Um, what would be your message to everyone now watching this show and who will be watching later? How do we actually unite together and change this mindset? Because when we do this, I'm sure that Croatia will be uh, a great place to both live in and to do business. In. So how do we unite? How do we change mindset together? Well, I think I think w- one of the big problems is the negativity here. So... <laughs> Like Jan said, he doesn't surround himself with negative people, nor, nor do I. Um, we have all our famous keyboard warriors, I call them, the guys that are on the internet, blah, blah, blah. So we get them to make a commitment that for every, every negative comment they make, they commit to picking up a piece of trash on the beach in Croatia when they come next time. Because this is the country they love so much, and so they can do that a little bit. They can be negative if they want to be, but then make a positive contribution to Croatia. Um, to me, it's very simple. It's uh, work on the mindset, go digital, look to the future, learn from people who are doing things better than you. Estonia is doing things much better than we are digitally. Macedonia is doing phenomenally in, in, in promoting wine. You, you compare the, how, how Croatia promotes wine. Rwanda is doing sensational stuff using football to promote tourism. They have a deal with uh, Arsenal uh, football. 
we were in the World Cup final and we're nowhere. So go and look for best practices around the world and learn from them. Go and find the inspiring people in Croatia. Hang out with Remats and find out how to build a car industry. I'm sure he's got a couple of people he could ask. Definitely. And that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I would say that we just have to open our eyes and really see how much unused potential this country has. Uh, we are all the time talking about how important the tourism is in Croatia. Just to put it in perspective, the Dutch tourism industry is eight times bigger than the Croatian tourism industry. We never talk about tourism in the Netherlands. It's only 3% of our GDP in the Netherlands. Uh, but if you look at those figures, it just shows how much more growth we can have outside of tourism. If you look at a country like the Netherlands uh, being the second largest exporter of agriculture uh, in the world after the United States, knowing that Croatia uh, used to feed a whole region and knowing that we are today importing food uh, to feed our own people here in Croatia, we, we, we need people to, to, to really make a change there. We should become a largely exporting food nation. That's just that's just one thing. Uh, other than that, just keep your eyes open for for what amazing companies in Western Europe or worldwide are doing. Implement policies that that, as Paul said, countries like Estonia have introduced. It's so easy. I mean, we just need to take the Chinese approach to it. Copy paste what works. Of course, Benchmark. Yeah. Uh, thank yeah. you. Before uh, finishing the show, as promised, uh, we have to. Uh, presents for you, for those who want. Jan mentioned food, so let's start with the Adam Doma food package. So if someone wants to try the, uh, excellent healthy food, which you just need to you know cook for one minute and you have a meal prepared, just type in comments that you would like to receive a package and the first person who does it, uh, uh, my assistant Paula will contact you and uh, connect you with Jay Kamaras, who is the owner of Adam Doma. And the second award, uh, those of you who want to make your garden beautiful, uh, uh, Eva from Green Hypnotic would uh, would like to uh, welcome you with one consulting session to make your garden beautiful. Uh, so Jan and Paul, thank you once again for joining thank us, for having us. Uh, this in this this time online. To share your message even more widely, wide, widely, and I hope we meet soon in person uh, to drink some wine together and to enjoy. I like these online events, but I really do like uh, offline or real events even more. Hope you too. Next time we'll see each other live again. Then next time we see each other live, we can see each other in Dalmatia. I have yes, let's do I it. I, I I will let you on my private island. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Paul. Bye -bye. Talk to you. Thank you all. See you. Bye. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.